Good day, I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center and West Hartford Cable Access TV. If you have any questions, you may contact us at our website, www.thepmc.org, uh, thepreventivemedicinecenter.org. And uh, we hope you enjoy these shows, which are brought to you, as I said, by West Hartford Cable Access TV. Now into the news of the day. Uh, in the old days when you went to a theater, they used to have these short newsreels that ran about 10 minutes and then you were into the uh, feature. Uh, so today's uh, news of the day is uh, an ad that I saw in uh, Hartford County edition of NAHRT, now, what, Natural Awakenings. And in this is, um, uh, Let's see, Bridge Healing Arts Center, which is in Farmington, Connecticut. And the website is www.painstops.com. And what they have is uh, I, pulses of electromagnetic magnetic forces, uh, a shot out of electromagnetism. Years ago, a fellow who taught me most, most, if not all, of what I know, that's not completely true, about alternative medicine, the main portion of alternative medicine, was Bill Spear. And Bill Spear is the one who introduced me to Niken, N-I-K-K-E-N, magnets. And uh, at that time, he told me he was sleeping on a Niken magnetized mattress, and he said it completely changed the quality of his sleep. Now, the Niken products were not uh, inexpensive, and so I didn't recommend the mattresses, but you could buy smaller magnets, uh, this size and that size, and if you had a sore elbow, you could tape one to the elbow and leave it on. But I, what I'm saying is, I think there is something to the concept of magnetism for healing and improvement. So that's why I mentioned this uh, program by Barbara Chudiak, Certified Pulse XL Pro Technician, Bridge Healing Arts Center, Farmington, Connecticut. And it says uh, pain, miserable, uh, repair and regenerate, reduce inflammation, bone growth, sports injuries, torn tendons, arthritis, immune system. I think magnetism probably touches on all of those, um, perhaps dramatically in some people, and moderately in others, and of course everything in medicine comes in small, medium, and large, or negative, neutral, or good effects. And I think that in general, this will be a good product. I do not see any downside to it. Uh, next uh, quick hitter before we get to cosmic questions and best answers is a discussion of a Dr. Bredesen uh, of UCLA who has a program for the prevention, if not reversal, of Alzheimer's disease. And there's much in common with the kinds of things that I've said for a long time. Eliminating all simple carbohydrates. Uh, if you want to control your weight, that's sort of one of the things you have to do ordinarily. You have to get rid of the bread, you have to get rid of the pastas, the potatoes function as uh, simple carbohydrates. Uh, corn is another simple carbohydrate, popcorn. Uh, cakes, cookies, chips, crackers, all those are the processed carbohydrates that keep weight on. As a matter of fact, the carbs in general keep weight on, but there are healthier carbs. And the healthier carbs are the ones I always recommend. Grains, vegetables, beans, fruit, nuts, and seeds as such. Grains like brown rice is better than brown rice pasta, but brown rice hulled, which means whole, hulled barley, whole oats, teff, quinoa, amaranth, millet, buckwheat, all of those are the grains. Now you have to go easy on those if you're trying to control your weight. But if you're at your trim size and you're exercising, then you can have those carbs. Then come the vegetables, which are all vegetables except potatoes. And more recently, I've sort of changed my mind about sweet potatoes and even carrots a little bit. You wanna get those down. Uh, then come the beans, all the beans are fine. Not too much, a uh, normal person doesn't need more than six to eight ounces a day. 
Uh, I have a couple of patients who are trying to lose weight, and they told me they were sticking to my diet, and sure enough, they were. They weren't losing any weight, but they were eating tons of beans, which contained protein as well as the carb, and the carb portion was stopping weight loss. So beans have to be limited in amount, but they are encouraged as a much better protein than fish or chicken or meat or cheese or eggs or veal or hamburger or salami, bologna, uh, etc. Uh, put yogurt in that list too of things to uh, avoid and be replaced by the beans. Then the fruit, uh, the only fruit to kind of play down would be bananas. That's almost a raw hit of sugar, uh, but all the other fruits are good, especially the berries. Berries contain polyphenols, and I've started to see that word pop up a little bit more and more. So berries are great to eat, all the berries, and when they're not in season, you want to buy the frozen berries because they were picked and frozen during season, so they are generally cheaper than the fresh berries that come in from either Chile or New Zealand on the other side of the equator. And you have to pay for all that shipping. Grains, vegetables, beans, fruit, nuts. I just saw an article the other day on the value of eating uh, walnuts. That's one of the three nuts that I generally recommend. Walnuts, pecans, and almonds um, are the three nuts that are probably, quote, best. If there's one that's, quote, not good for you, that would be cashews because it has the wrong type of fat. Yes, I know it's the tastiest one. And if you're a man, you need two Brazil nuts a day, which contains selenium and therefore has a beneficial effect on prevention of cancer of the prostate. Uh, cancer of the prostate, by and large, in my mind, in my mind, in my mind, is due to dairy products. Uh, so I tell people, if you don't want cancer of the prostate, don't have dairy products. Skim milk, 1%, 2%, light and lively, half and half creamer, yogurt, ice cream, cream, half and half, light and lively, um, 1%, 2%, all the... Uh, a little bit in your tea or coffee. I'm not arguing. If you don't want cancer of the prostate, I believe you should avoid dairy products 100% or as close as you can get to 100%. So uh, grains, vegetables, beans, fruit, nuts, and seeds, pumpkin seeds, poppy seeds. Eliminate all simple carbohydrates, and he says go gluten-free, and I've recommended that for quite a while. Um, the problem with wheat is that it has been so... Um, there's a word about interbreeding of sheep and cattle like to get more milk. Uh, I'm not talking about GMO, uh, genetically modified. I'm talking about interbreeding. Well, wheat has been interbred, which is not GMO, but it works like GMO, uh, to the point where it has way more gluten than it used to, and that gluten is a little bit hard, the gluten sensitivity is hard on the intestines, even in a lot of normal people. And so I do recommend avoiding gluten going wheat free with one exception, Ezekiel bread. Now, if you had uh, celiac disease, I would tell you to be very careful about trying celiac bread or eating barley because barley also contains gluten. And uh, therefore I say uh, Ezekiel bread is, prop is okay in most people who are trying to avoid wheat. It's a frozen bread, but if you slice it and put it in a toaster, absolutely delicious. Uh, hulled barley, I think, is probably different than wheat or rye. And so I say avoid wheat and rye and carefully try out the Ezekiel bread and hulled barley uh, if you feel like you're interested in those things and are trim. Remember, uh, hulled barley and bread are carbohydrates and will keep the weight on. So it's always being aware not paranoid, just aware of where you are and what you're doing in order to avoid problems. Meditating twice a day and beginning yoga to reduce stress. I wish the world would do yoga. It is calming and frees up your thinking. It just sort of clears your mind. Now, I know a lot of people who do yoga who are uh, not exactly on the right track, uh, but on the other hand, I think they'd be worse if they didn't do the yoga. So I encourage people to do the yoga. Next it says take melatonin, B12, vitamin D3, 
For most people, the proper dose of vitamin D3 is 5,000, not 400, not 1,000, not 2,000, 5,000 units vitamin D3 for five days a week, so to speak, the rest of your life. Uh, I have had no problem, well, that's not true. I've had very, very rare problems from people not tolerating that dosage. Uh, adequate sleep, seven to eight hours a night, uh, up from four to five. Uh, uh, get, your, get an electric uh, toothbrush, and if you can take the time, an electric flosser. Um, hormone therapy in women may be a benefit, but I wouldn't start that if you're more than 10 years past menopause. And ideal is in the first two to three years. Fasting for a minimum of 12 hours between dinner and breakfast. Most people overload their circuits by eating almost continuously from dinner time until bedtime. Uh, that's not good for the human body. The ideal in life would be to eat lunch and then not eat until the next morning and afternoon. And fasting all of that time would be a good idea. Exercising for a minute of 30 minutes, four to six days a week. I've said from the beginning, my intuition was 45 minutes, four days a week uh, as a requirement. And uh, that does all kinds of things, clears your head, gets you to sweat some things out. Uh, swimming is the best exercise, but on the other hand, whatever you will do is what counts. And what's more, you may say, well, where do I start? Start, I have a program that I call the five fives. That's walking out from wherever you're starting, your home, two and a half minutes, and you walk back two and a half minutes. And you do that for one week, and then you go five minutes out and five minutes back. And then you do that for another week, and then the next week, seven and a half, seven and a half, and you keep building it up to 50 minutes, five days a week, 50 weeks a year. It's called the program of the five fives. So start off with five minutes total, two and a half out, two and a half back, and add five minutes every week until you're at 50 minutes, and <coughs> 50 minutes a day, five days a week. Now, on to cosmic questions, best answers, and health's 10 commandments. Okay, uh, cosmic question. What is the purpose of life? What is the purpose of life? What do you think per the purpose of life is? For the most part, life is cosmic good luck, a blessing that you have received and nothing else. There is generally no preordained purpose to life, but there are obvious rules about how to proceed in life for a most good, least harm end result. There are, however, no absolute guarantees the good results in only good. So that's what is the purpose of life. The purpose of life is what you make of it. What is life all about? Life is about what you make of it. We've all passed through periods of victimization, but what becomes of you reasonably is what you make happen, even in an unreasonable world. We are stuck with this reality and have to make the best of it. Now that is sort of an important takeoff point for staying in reality. Things happen of all varieties, some good, some bad, some neutral, and the key is to deal with it as best possible and with perseverance and determination as well as an optimistic attitude. Uh, no matter where you are and what's going on, you're in jail, you're in a concentration camp, you're in a boring job, uh, you're not happily married, the kids are acting up, deal with it as best possible for a most good, least harm end result. What should I do? What should you do? What should you do? Do what you want, but in the words of the Boy Scout maxim, leave the campsite a better place after you have left than it was before you came. What is immorality? Now, I'll give you a second to think about that. What is immorality? Well, I think immorality is pollution of the body or environment, and everything else is arbitrary. You might say, well, what about robbery, and what about uh, the what about murder and what about war is fine. That's the environment you're in. 
In some places that will be acceptable, in some places that will not be acceptable. If you're Amish or Mennonite, uh, you may be a conscientious objector to war. Some people will say war is necessary to defend your rights and so on. But um, immorality is pollution of the body or the environment, and everything else is arbitrary, and what that community decides is correct. Discuss death. That's a tough one. Uh, the big news of the day is, is that Barbara Bush is, uh, so to speak, terminal, and she's about to die. She was a good lady. Uh, she spoke her mind. She spoke honestly. She never made any important demands in contrast to some other women that we've recently been familiar with. I cannot believe Hillary Clinton. I just cannot believe that woman. If you're a Democrat and you're watching this, a word I'd like to put in your mind is even-handed. Be even-handed in your evaluation of Hillary Clinton. I'm not saying don't, don't talk about uh, Trump. Uh, say what you have to say about Trump and be even-handed with him. He's got his strengths. He's got his weaknesses. She has her strengths. She has her weaknesses. But boy, does she keep sticking her foot in her mouth. Anyhow, discuss death. Death is the waste product, not the end product of life. The purpose of life is not death. The purpose of life is life. Bearing in mind the concept of for the most part, life should not be prolonged inappropriately by human intervention. There is a time and a place to not intercede. As a matter of fact, one of the articles that I tend not to read is, uh, what do you do with pacemakers that is keeping a heart beating? You know, that's part of the definition of who's alive, when everything else is not alive. And um, uh, it's an interesting question of what constitutes death and so on. Uh, most religions do not have a life at all costs attitude. Most religions have a very practical attitude that there is a time and place to naturally pass on to the next experience or lack thereof. If I do things right or wrong, how will they turn out? This is the law of probability. I love it. If you do things right, for the most part, they will turn out right, but occasionally they will turn out wrong. So success is not guaranteed. If you do things wrong, for the most part, they will turn out wrong, but occasionally they will turn out right. The same is, is true of both. So both of them can turn out right, and both of them can turn out wrong. There are no absolutes. Since there are no absolutes, for the most part, will govern or relate to virtually all circumstances very nicely. Life being this way will allow humans to make decisions, which some will do correctly. Now, I thought that was really funny when I wrote that. Let me read it to you again. Life being this way, there are no absolutes, that will allow humans to make decisions, which some will do correctly, with a clear implication that probably a lot won't do it correctly. So, anyhow, enough of my little dry sense of humor. Now, we've gone through the electromagnetic pulses, and we've talked about the prevention of Alzheimer's disease, and I've recommended yoga. Um, and even if you're stiff, you can begin very gently and do things orderly with the concept that you're sort of clearing your mind of the day's thoughts. Uh, Health's Ten Commandments. Uh, you and I live in a body. Uh, lions and tigers live in a body with specific needs. Crocodiles have specific needs. Deer and antelope have specific needs. Buffalo and wolves have specific needs. And each of those has a particular need that fits a particular pattern. Some of those are carnivores, meat eaters. Others of those are herbivores. And uh, none of them are supposed to breathe smoke or drink dirty water. That's one of the things that always fascinates me. When I see these mud holes dry, drying up, when I watch National Geographic and it shows uh, the crocodiles in the water uh, and the hippopotamus in the water, and then the, the water holes start drying up, how can those wild animals drink that stuff? And obviously, they're attuned to it. Now, that brings in the concept of carnivores. 
Carnivores have fangs and claws, but here was the point I wanted to make. Carnivores can digest rotten meat, raw rotten meat, and herbivore vegetarians like you and me cannot. Now, be, there'll be plenty of people who aren't going to like that. Hey, fight with whatever you want. You want the best cholesterol, the best blood pressure, uh, not becoming diabetes, diabetic, least chance of cancer, get as close to being vegan as you can. I'm not telling anybody to do anything. Free to choose is one of my rules, but there are implications. Like when I said, what is the purpose of life? What are the requirements of life? And um, the sound man today uh, said that, uh, besides reading my book, he said that uh, uh, he'd heard that 90% of health is determined by the patient, him, herself. And that is true. 90% of diseases could probably be prevented by the person taking care of themselves, not smoking, limiting alcohol to four drinks a week or less, eating a brown rice, vegetable, bean, fruit, nut and seed type diet with uh, animal protein maybe twice a week, and that's optional. Animal protein is completely optional. Animal protein is fish, chicken, turkey, meat, cheese, eggs, milk products, including yogurt, ice cream, cottage cheese, 1%, uh, 2%, light and lively, creamer, and so on. So if you want your best shot at health, then get as close to being vegan as you can. And that should be 90%. What is 90%? Well, if there are three meals a day and seven days in a week, then that's 19 meals a week should be essentially unprocessed whole foods vegan. And I didn't say it was easy. I didn't say it was fun. I didn't say it was convenient. I said that is the price of your freedom. Pick and choose. Everyone is free to choose. You can choose life, freedom, and health, or you can choose disease, costs, time away from business, and so on and so on. Now, okay, check the time, my nice watch. All right, um, Health Ten Commandments. You are genetically strong and designed to be well, not ill. If anything goes wrong with you, look in the mirror and ask yourself, what am I doing to make this happen? You are in charge. Things don't just happen to you. We set ourselves up to get knocked down in all vast reasonable probability. Now, I've got to admit Skylab, uh, or that, uh, I think it's Russian, uh, big satellite, uh, did that come down already? Yeah, it did come down. I didn't hear where it came down. But Skylab was uh, something that really taught me something. That was a uh, satellite from a long time ago that was really big and it was going to re-enter the atmosphere, and everybody was afraid Skylab was going to fall on them. <coughs> now, because the water is mostly Earth, uh, boy, get that, the water is mostly Earth. How about the Earth is mostly water? I think it's like 70% water. Uh, the probability is that whatever comes down would come down in an ocean. And I think that's what happened to Skylab. But regardless, even if it had fallen on a city or a uh, country somewhere, the probability of your being hit by it was very, 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 very tiny. And everybody was sort of uh, concerned about Skylab falling on them. And I must admit, at the time, I was concerned too. But those kinds of events where trees fall on you or suddenly uh, the earth opens up uh, a sinkhole or an earthquake uh, and so on, those kinds of events are really pretty rare, and the vast, 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 I won't keep going, the vast, vast, vast majority of the time, whatever happens to you is what you made or allowed to happen to you. All right, so uh, you're genetically strong and designed to be well, not ill. If anything happens to you, look in the mirror and ask yourself, what have I done to make this happen? Of course, the implication is stop doing it. Start doing the right thing so things don't happen to you. You might say, what's the cause of MS and what's the cause of rheumatoid arthritis? And everything has a genetic element to it. Uh, I gotta show you something. I've shown this to you many times. There. This says nothing goes wrong with the human body if you don't anger it. 
That's what that says. Now, um, and that's true. People don't get cancer of the breast unless they make it happen. And you may say, well, I knew this woman, and she was a vegetarian, did yoga, never smoked, and still she got cancer of the breast or whatever. There was a time when she was not that way, and there was something that angered her genes. I don't know whether it was the water or air pollution or what, but whenever anything bad happens, we all ought to go back three minutes? Is that what you just said? Holy cow. Run DMC. I got a big, big, big mouth. All right. The next one is you chose it. Accept your choices. Experience the consequences. Learn from it and change. Learn from it and change or don't. I'm not angry with you, but here is the truth. You are the person who's gotten yourself into this circumstance. Your judgment is open to question. So if anything does go wrong with you, be careful to look at what you have been doing. All drugs are poison. Even the ones I prescribe, including vitamins, minerals, herbs, and supplements, be well, use as few as possible. That is not to say that there isn't a time for medication, surgery, etc., etc. You can never be too rich, have too many black shoes, or be too thin. That's uh, true at the 99% level. The other 1% are the people uh, who have an eating disorder and are far too thin. The food mantra, we've already talked about what you should eat. Breathe clean air, obviously, don't smoke. Uh, try not to live near a factory. Drink clean water, limit alcohol to four drinks a week or less. Exercise, we've talked about that. Keep a positive serving attitude. And judge not, lest ye be judged. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. I am not, and you should not be here to criticize, but be here to evaluate, educate, and serve. As when beginning to read the Quran, read as much of this as is comfortable for you. So um, I've gotten down to the two-minute sign. I hope today's uh, discussion was of interest to you. Uh, send millions fast to both the West Hartford Cable Access TV, SMF, uh, and the Preventive Medicine Center. We hope you enjoy these programs. And I'll just say good day and God bless you all. And uh, look forward to spring coming instead of this snow and cold rain we have.